Got it. Hello, here we are in Wind here we are in Window Rock, Arizona, at the Navajo Nation Museum and the Hogan uh, here at the Shema Storytelling and how it come about here with Red Milla Cody. Oh, Yat eh. Now my first question would be how did um, Shema Storytelling come about and how you came to this location to do it? I originally the Shima storytelling came about from uh gosh, let's see. I I think as a mom I, I often wondered what you know what where other mothers were and, and with their toddlers and, and what they were doing. Um, because when I would go back and forth and travel between uh, Luke and here, um, I didn't know what to do with, you know, especially with my, my little one as a mom, uh, because I wanted to have him, you know, socialize more. And, and, and so the one individual that I would all, often run into was um, Pauletta. Uh, Lee Chi at, at different events and and so I thought of her and, and reached out to her and asked her if um, she'd be interested in uh, putting something together um, with the Navajo Nation Museum uh, for storytelling for kids, for toddlers and um, older kids and our youth. And so I went to the Navajo Nation, uh, Navajo Nation Library at the, located at the Navajo Nation Museum and spoke to Alma and, uh, and proposed the idea to her and she was excited about it and, and, um, and the next day I met with um, Pauletta and she told me about a story time that they did in Natnishoshe at the uh, children's library located there and so I went to observe and and had the opportunity to meet Stephanie Little Hat uh, who she herself is a mother and, and um, homeschools for children and so it just we sat down we had it you know, over lunch and, and discussed the idea and came up with the name Shima Storytelling and um, right then and there developed a curriculum for you know the, the first from storytelling event, which is located, which is every Tuesday uh, here at the Navajo Nation Museum's Hold On uh, for the summer. Oh, that's awesome. And then uh, next question would be um, getting your, your guests who come to special guests. Like today you had Ernie from James and Ernie. And he did a great job with the kids. I mean, the kids were laughing and having fun. And the way he put the story together of um, green eggs and ham with um, saying, uh, you know, green yangis and spam, that, that, that made the kids laugh. Well, what's the outtake on what, what the kids will get out of this um, storytelling to take home, to, well, to share? The whole purpose of, of what we're doing uh, is, is to, to read in the episode to, to our young folks, um, to our youth, and to the children, because we do that at home as, as mothers, as parents. Um, we prioritize the Dana language in our storytelling and, and just in our everyday conversations with our little ones. And so that's what we're bringing here and incorporating here um, into Shema storytelling. And we also um, work and collaborate with First Times First um, as well, and, um, and they, they've, they've been very supportive and very encouraging as they um, also provide free books for people that come and the families that, that come. And so it's um, today, like you said, we've James, uh, or yeah, Ernie, so associate today, Ernie associate this is the third, was our second guest today. Last week we had Miss Navajo Nation, um, and she she read uh, her favorite books in Jeanette Bazaar to the kids, and then with Ernie, with Ernie being able to incorporate um, his version, both in English and in Bazaar, um, you know, even with, with individuals who are not fluent in Navajo, it's fine because we, we're we're basically being inclusive 
uh, in a sense that it's, it's primarily to encourage our young ones to read. And um, even if it's just a few words, like Ernie was, was, was incorporating into his storytelling, saying, green eggs and yeji, or hoan, or um, what else was he saying? He was, you know, just incorporating what, what uh, you know, Denebizad, he, he knew into his storytelling. I mean, that in itself is encouraging to, to our young folks. Really. All right. And, um... Off the subject of uh, the Shema storytelling, um, going back to being crowned as Miss Navajo Nation, the feeling and exactly when they were putting the crown on your head, I would like to know how that, what was going through <laughs> your mind and how that felt. Well, I did know I was going to become Miss Navajo for one. I, I think that was a, a huge surprise for me. So when, um, and that was 21 years ago this year. Um, and so that night when they when they crowned me as Miss Navajo, um, I was I was shocked. I was shocked, um, but I was really excited because in that moment I fulfilled a childhood dream. Wow, that's awesome. And uh, question number four would be about your singing. You got uh, four albums out? Six. Six albums out. And um, you, you're, you're performing all over. What, what gives you the courage and the want to perform in front of so many people? And how, how do you get on that stage without fear and being the strong, powerful woman that I know you are to succeed and to get off that stage and just feel proud let's see i'm afraid <laughs> i'm still very nervous you know not afraid but i'm nervous i'm always nervous any any performer will tell you that they're always nervous before they go on stage um it's a matter of how you channel that nervousness and and so um just knowing that i'm there for the for the people and knowing that i'm there to share my voice and share my message through song or through um, what I may be passionate about, you know, as, you know, may be passionate about as a, as, as a, as a person, as a woman, as a Dine Nakitha woman. And, um, and how that always is, you know, what's so beautiful about our singing is that there's stories that are involved in, you know, that they're, 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 they're stories. And, and, and even through singing, we're storytelling, right? And, um, and so... So I think just just sharing that, just sharing that with you know with, with the audience and, and, and the attendees, and knowing that um, you know that you're you know through 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 that storytelling and through that message that you're conveying to you know to the attendees that they're gonna walk away with something, they're gonna walk away um, hopefully feeling good you know about the message. From the songs and the message that you share, um, you know, in my case, with the work that I do as as an advocate against uh, gender based, you know, gender based violence, um, and the over overall hierarchy of violence that you know that that, that you know that I that I discuss and that, that I talk about in my presentations, and then the work that we do um, for our people and for all of us people and for the land and um, our non human relatives and each other. You know, just really conveying that message about kinship, about eh, and the importance of that, and what it means to be a good relative to. to wow, that's awesome. And my fifth and final question pertains to our youth, mm -hmm. and being a mom now. What are some uh, words of encouragement or words of advice you could give to children, where they can keep on with their language and their culture? Well, as a mom now, um, it's I think my any message that I don't really give always now really comes from the depth of you know of of, of my womb, I guess you could say, you know, of, of where I was able to to bring life, you know, from in, in terms of how we um, are to you know how. How we are to preserve and revitalize, rather more revitalize than anything, revitalize and strengthen um, our language, our beautiful language. You know, it's, uh, it's in Jonia, um, it, 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 
you see that at the net at the net and the net and the sound. So just the beauty, the, 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 how beautiful our language is, how powerful our language is. Um, Ernie talked today about the one of the books that he enjoys reading, the Navajo Code Talkers, and how they use that, how they use their language, you know, to to um, to win you know, World War II to help this so-called country in the U.S. Um, the so-called United States, um, and. You know, to so so that says a lot, even in terms of how we apply that with our prayers and our songs and and our and, and our healing in terms of our ceremonies. And, and it's it's powerful. You know, our language is powerful. You know, in that way. And and so to to, to as a mom now to 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 share that with my little one and to hear him you know, respond back to me in the nevisad is is you know it's it's, it's beautiful. Um, and and it's hope and, and that's it, and to me that's that's, that's you know that's um, that instills some hope for the future for our young folks. And so we have to encourage our, our young ones. We don't have to you know without pulling out the traditional stick and banging it over people you know our young ones' heads and telling them the never not young to get young to get young to get you know speak Navajo speak Navajo without being a part of that process in terms of how we're encouraging them to to learn. What are we doing as parents? What are we doing as community members? What are we doing, you know, as um, as grandparents, as relatives, to encourage, to be a part of that process, to encourage our young ones, you know, to to learn our language and to strengthen and revitalize our language. And it's, you know, Doctor, we do work at the Kehoe Shop with Doctor Jennifer Wheeler, um, and and uh, who is also a former Miss Navajo, and she she always encourages us at the end of uh, at the end of her her um, the Nepizad Bahoa workshop by telling us even if it's just a little you know just a simple word you know just challenge yourself challenge yourself to <clears throat> to speak the language and and um, and and uh, and learn it you know and just and just challenge yourself to to, to, to learn the language. But you know, not to, but not to also overwhelm yourself in the process. But you know, to 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 really, um, you know, just take it, take on that challenge. And I'm doing that too. I don't know how to read in the episode, but this Shema storytelling has been very helpful in that process for me. Um, and and working with, you know, two individuals that that are. A part of that process in, in, in encouraging their young ones, their kids, you know, to, to speak the Navajo language and prioritizing the language in, you know, in their home. So it's for our young folks today, um, I, ref I, I, ref I, I refer to them as our modern day monster slayers. And um, they, you know, what I love about our young people is that they're fearless and they're fierce. And just like our our Maya um, Isana and Toba Chishchina, and I, you know, you, you, they they our young people today, they question, they question um, these systems of oppression. They question what continues to oppress us as as um, oppress us as as um, they question. What continues to oppress us as indigenous and oppressed, you know, people, oppressed people, um, indigenous peoples and oppressed peoples, and so I love that about them. I love that they, you know, they say no, you know, they say no. They stand up. To you know, to these you know, to um, to to things that are not good that they clearly see are not good for us, and that if it's not a part of being a part of that process of being a good relative, you know, they question that. And so, um, a lot of our young people today are really bringing back those teachings of of F and, and the and the importance of that. And so, I really appreciate that about about our young people. And 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 as parents, as as adults, um, as community members, as older folks, we this is this is our time to listen, and this is our time to support and be encouraging, um, and, and, and supporting our young people in that way. Oh, that's awesome! Well, thank you for the interview. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and um, 
how can people follow you on your next events or get some of your music and you give out any of your social media? Um, they can follow me on Facebook. They can follow me on Instagram. Um, I'm very, I'm not really active as much on, on my social media other than posting, um, other than posting, um, events that are going on or things that are going on or educational, you know, um, you know things that are, that, that, that are educational, but, uh, yeah, Facebook, Instagram, Gallup Times, Gallup and Canada, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you, you have your own website? <laughs> so, oh yeah, sorry, my website is uh, redmillicody.com and redmillicody.net. Okay. So, I kind of miss those days of just reading the newspapers and like, yeah, social media is like, eh. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I can't, no. Oh, yeah, the dog.